You that damn boss talk one on one. What's that TikTok dance? We gonna talk. We gonna have right. We be on fire. I know nothing we about that. It's a unique hustle. See, I was surprised. Check it, check it, check it. This unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not nothing. You know, my day all gone. But first of all, let me tell y'all what I need for each and every person watching this show to do. First of all, y'all need to go over to our new Patreon channel. And subscribe to our membership for a small membership fee because that's the only place you're going to find our full-length interviews after a while. You will not be able to find our full-length interviews on YouTube anymore. The only things you'll find on there is our clips, which they're very exciting. Don't get me wrong. But to get the, vo the full gist of anything, you have to head over to our new Patreon channel. So check us out, Boss Talk Podcast 101 on all social media platforms. So click like, share, follow, do the thing. See you soon. Man, hey, man. Hey, hey, everybody. We got a guy <laughs> here today, man. This guy here, man, ever since we started, man, he's always been, he helped me a lot, motivated me in ways he did, you don't even know. Took care of Boss Talk 101. We go over to a spot and do our photo shoots and everything else, man. He wake up all through the night dealing with me, man. This is my guy, <laughs> guy. This guy right here, he 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 really is a behind the scene. You know, he I should be paying him for uh, what they call that when somebody give you consultant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should, but I'm but I'm not gonna pay him though. <laughs> man, my boy Doug Johnston's in the building. What's going on, my guy? Oh, another day, another day. Man, it's so good to have you back on Boss Talk 101 where you belong, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude, how did YouTube piss y'all off? <laughs> YouTube. Jamaica say, just cut them all off. Well, well, no, just the no, clips, right? No, we still there. We still on the clips today. The today. clips are going to be there. She's just not gonna, the full interviews, it'll be, the ones that are there will still be on there. But yeah. I think we just doing something just to, uh, you know, um, really just to have different avenues so that everybody will be able to right. see us everywhere. It's just if you're a fisherman like I fish, you know, now I'm a fisherman of men because of the way that I believe as a, a, as a follower. But right. at the end of the day, I can say this much, you know, when I fish, I would, I drop one line here, I might put one over here, I might put one over there. Right. And I'm trying to space out and make sure I catch it. You know, I'm trying to find something to eat. You know but what I'm not, right, not right, only right. that, when you're trying to cater to everybody, because even on our YouTube channel, you have a lot of people who love the full length interviews and that's all they want to see. But we're putting out so many clips that they're like, OK, when is the full one coming out for this? And sometimes the full one might not come out for a month, two months after right. we finish clipping everything. OK, well, if you go ahead and pay for our membership on Patreon, you'll see the full length interview as soon as the clips start coming out way in advance. You see what right. I mean? Because that's what you like. But you have some people who don't want to watch the full length interviews. They only want to watch the clips because right. they don't have that attention span to sit down for an hour right. to watch the whole thing. So we sort of separate our viewers that way. You know what I mean? Right, who right, like right. this go over here and who likes this can stay over here. Right, right. Wow. That makes sense. But you know, one thing about it, everything's a learning curve. You know, here we are. This We're two years in now. Right. You know, we came in this game uh, blind, uh, really uh, lame. Mm. Uh, I didn't learning. understand. You know what I mean? <laughs> learning. Right. But then, you know, as you go, you just try to find different ways to reinvent yourself and to keep yourself relevant. you one of those guys that when it comes to keeping yourself relevant, I've seen you do so many different things. And that was the reason I wanted to get you on the show was because mm -hmm. I keep seeing you reinventing the wheel, you know, doing different things to make sure that, um, you know, people are being seen, but also seen at a great quality right so i wanted to i wanted to tap into that tonight um you i, I remember the project you did boosie what gone wild and boosie gone bad gone, boosie bad. gone bad everybody want to make it wild though but <laughs> boosie gone bad now now i want to talk about that because last time i didn't get to talk to you after that event but i remember going into it i talked to you all the way up until the day of Right. But just uh, give me an understanding of what goes into doing something, you know, on that level, to, because there was lights everywhere. It it was so it was so lively. You seen it, right? The, the way that it was the room was lit, uh, the way that the people were being captured, the way that the cameras was shifting from place to place. Just give me a rundown on what it takes to build something up like that. I mean, like I told uh, uh, Boosie that it was a million dollar house party. I mean, all mm. bullshit aside, you know, we went in and executive produced that with him. He was going through the stuff with Mark Zuckerberg getting shut down. 
they happened to come through my studio, I was like, hey, we can set up a whole situation, pay-per-view, you know, uncensored, uncut, Boosie gone bad. And then, you know, we put a team together, got things signed contracts. And then as the creative team was together, you know, y- y'all been out to the studio where we had the like 15 foot whiteboard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, we'd have that thing full. Full. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then this thing was like, someone said Boosie baddies. And it was just like, what? That's it. You know, wow. and so we we and we ended up launching that last minute, midstream. Okay, you know, really? and then yeah, that wasn't even part of the the situation because wow. you're you love to plan ahead of time. You will sit down and plan way ahead of time, right? So to have something just come in like that, that's that's different. Nah, for you. It, it, it tweaked me a little bit, but it was like the idea was like, yo, you can't move you forward. Can't, right. Like we got to figure this out. Like this is this wasn't thought about. This is mm-hmm. such a brilliant idea. We got to push forward with it. You know, with that said, you know, it just gets into a situation where people don't understand how big this is. Unless you paid that nineteen ninety nine, And let me tell you, if y'all didn't pay the nineteen ninety nine, you missed out because that mm-hmm. was one hell of a. And you've never done nothing did. like that before. Uh, we doubt, you know, we started messing with that, like uh, with Erica, you know, right. when we did the apocalypse, because what people don't understand, we were producing live production way before COVID happened. Yeah. Right. So then when COVID happened, people were like, oh, okay, now we understand what y'all been trying to do this past Pre- four yeah, or five years. Yeah. Right. So it was other things that we had had opportunities that came up that we played around with, but going into doing a, um, it was like a game show because now you got the Boosie Baddies. You're going to have the Boosie Baddie crowned mm-hmm. Boosie Baddie Atlanta from Boosie. Yeah. You know, so there was there was a competition that they had to go through to win the Boosie Baddie. Mm-hmm. Correct. You know what I mean? But I, I, and I get it because I watched it. I did pay my nineteen ninety nine, <laughs> and I sat down in the back where my wife had it set up where right. I could be in the backyard. And I sit there and I watched and I because it was free up until a point. It mm-hmm. did. Right, it, it right, gave right. a lot of weight right, too. Right, it right, was a yeah. lot being given away. So I was so sitting there we were looking that. We were looking at that concept like uh, an MMA. A fight or whatever. Yeah, Billy. They'll, they'll be on there all day talking about the damn fight over and over and over again, and you're sitting there watching this shit all day long before the fight actually happens. Correct. And all that's free. But what they're doing is they're doing self promotion during the right. process. So what we wanted to try to do was get it out there to to the people, to his super fans, to show them the quality, right? That this this is going to be a real real quality production for the 1999 and try to educate them and show them and then boom at you know whatever time it was cut them off and now now it's you know if you haven't paid the 1999 you ain't seen shit from here on out correct mm-hmm. and I, I i remember it was getting a little dark outside on the back patio and i was sitting out there i said man i guess i better move it on in so mm-hmm. i moved it on in right that's when i had to pay but I it was remember. cool man <laughs> we, we had a full full-blown production team from dallas there was you know it was all dallas well i, I the heard choreographed but, but, dancers. But how many people you know, prophecy film there uh yep, that's Prophecy my boy, was out man. there. Shout out, yeah, yeah, KV. Yeah, I mean, how, how many KV, people did it out. take to put something like this together? That right there was around twenty. It was a crew of twenty five people to pull that production live, broadcasted. It was like Boosie broke into Channel Four News and figured out how to run all the broadcast equipment. Mm-hmm. Wow, you know what I mean? So it's it was like high quality production, but Ratchet one thousand. <laughs> and if anybody want to see it right now, they can go find it. Uh, no, we have it off now. I mean, it's, it's you know it's done. Like if you didn't pay the nineteen ninety nine, that's 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 it. Okay, I wasn't yeah. sure if they can still go pay twenty five dollars no, and go watch you, you it. You probably right. can still watch it though, right? No, no that's what he said. No, so they took it's it not, down. They took no, because I mean that gets into the technical stuff of things. But when you shoot something and you do an agreement with an artist like this, you can do it through that period of time. But then once that deal becomes video on demand, now you're talking getting the labels and sync licensing, right? And oh, all okay. these additional costs that incur into leaving it up. Yeah, oh, if that okay. makes sense. So, like, yeah, if, you, if you look at the movies that he's dropping right now, mm-hmm. it's all original content, right? So now he doesn't have to deal with the labels. It's it's mm-hmm. his music, right? It's smart. It's smart. I, I well, when you guys, okay, you guys did it. Y'all did auditions here. Yeah, I remember the, the build up. Um, how e- how easy was it maneuvering Boosie from here to there, from room to room? Dealing with uh, the setup with uh, Brittany uh, Loso and, uh, and Space, Space Boy. Boy, right? Like, how was it getting them organized to even be able to situate them in the places you needed them to be? Because you had to direct this thing as well, right? Right, right. Now we, yeah, directed, produced, executive, produced, correct. You know, so, so 
what what happened on that boosie was in right so he was like a kid in a candy shop and so i'll tell you a quick story i was like hey boosie we got to move some things around the house and everything he's like man i already told you move whatever you need to move like why you keep talking to me <laughs> and i'm like okay so he, he takes off right well they take off for like eight hours and i have like four 26 foot box trucks pull up while he's gone right yeah and we man his whole bottom floor got moved down to the basement mm -hmm. i'm talking the piano the dining room table the sofa everything like everything I said, fuck it. He said, what you know, when he came back, back what he said. So that's what I was worried because he kept saying, man, don't talk to her. He told you, you, you family, like you do whatever you need to do. So when he came back, I was sort of off to the side. He didn't see me. And I said, two things are going to happen. Where's my whiteboard goddamn director? <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, he going to get on IG or some shit. And yeah. that's what happened. He was like, he's like, IG live, boost gone bad, boost gone oh, bad. In. This is how my fucking million dollar house party. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so like, he he, he, he fed know, right into yeah, it. So when he got offline and shit, he was like, man, white boy, you don't did your thing in here. Goddamn. <laughs> which, man. You know, if you go back and look at the footage, it looks like goddamn something that was shot in LA. You oh. would never think that that was shot in his house, in his, you know, 22,000 square foot estate. Oh, man. I seen it, man. It was like, it was live, man. But what yeah. I want to know, Okay, because when you're doing anything, if something go, go wrong, it's going to go wrong. Right. Tell me about something that actually went wrong and how did you deal with during, it? During that. During the whole During thing. the whole boost. I mean, there's a ton of stuff like Just backstage. You know, when you got the comm systems on and shit, you know, there's all kinds of chaos, right? But then when you go back and look at the actual production, you're like, you know, wow. You know, you can't see that none of that chaos. Even you know, I mean, yeah, you know, you, you might have a couple girls like, you know, they have start, a little bicker and fight. But yeah, and then you're getting into, they're getting ready to throw down and shit downstairs. No and you fights got happen? You, you know, believe it or not, there, there was one that almost <laughs> happened. But we had, a, you know, 150 girls, like, you know, liquor, drink, yeah. and we catered food and everything. But right. they respected us enough. We handled our business at a higher level than That's these old. girls are used to. So they respected the situation. Hats off to all the Boosie baddies, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they respected his house. They respected the situation. That's you know, cool. a lot of the stuff was timing, you know. like So if you had to get a group of girls up there during the, the, the free portion of it, you know, getting them up there on time and... You know, yeah, because girls are always late. You already right, know that. Right. So we had we had to run some like Boosie footage and that and there were some people complaining about, you know, I'm here to see Boosie gone bad, not not a Boosie in concert live, you know. So that's how we sort of mask that issue. Wow. Okay. You know, that's so you, you have to have plan B where you got content where if something goes wrong, you can pre roll <laughs> that content to keep everyone happy while you're fixing whatever's gotta be fixed behind the scenes live. But you know that you have like although you fixing that and for us who watching it, we not seen anything happen, but some people who are there might be like trying to go live, like, Man, you see this mess? They yeah. over here doing da -da -da. <laughs> how did you control that? So we, we had people watching that. You know what I'm saying? Part of the staff, the crew, you know, you, you, you try to control that to the best of your ability yeah. and things. And so people are like, well, people are on live. What's, that's going to defeat the purpose of, you know, paying the 1999. Exactly. But, but, it, but it doesn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like y'all's audio here is icy. That's what I've mm -hmm. always respected. And, <laughs> and then the cameras and everything y'all have in here. It's it's a higher level of production. Right. That's why I'm sitting in this seat. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be sitting here. Correct. I just keep correct. everything 100 on that. <laughs> It's the same thing within that. You know, if you paid the nineteen ninety nine, if I'm involved in it, the shit's gonna be high quality mm -hmm. and it's you're just gonna get a better experience out of the whole situation. Man, right. I can almost tell when you on a I, I can tell. Like when you're doing something, I because I've been watching it now right. with you so such so for for the time we've met, it's just a whole another level when it right. comes to the quality of what you're putting out when you're producing. Man, we anything. need to check into that situation. All the production companies in Atlanta who like, who the fuck is this production <laughs> company? You know, and they're they're out of Dallas. Alice. Messed like, them what? up. Yeah, it messed them up because we didn't ask for anybody. Like Man. when we did the casting call, we didn't call the casting directors. We didn't do. We bypassed, you did everything. We, we bypassed everybody. Yeah, you can do that you know, when you but, when you understand the business. But you've been doing this for a long time, so they should know who you are. No, nah, they, they nah, don't nah, work yeah. like that. Because I'm all, I'm I'm never on camera. Like y'all are one of the few. Really, shit, I'm the only you know one what I'm saying it was y'all, and then there's another company. Just you know, what I'm saying where I jumped on, yeah, because this other that. thing we have. Right, but I saw that. Y'all, the first person I ever did an interview for, right? Ever. Right. Let me let me you just know. ask you. Um, I want to I want to ask you about you have a relationship with NBA Young Boys, you know, camp, right? Uh, you had some dealings with them. I remember me and you talked, and you told me about driving uh, them. 
back to Baton Rouge. Right. Let's talk about that for a second. Because right. I, I, I mean, a white guy driving uh, these brothers, <laughs> What? how did that even end up happening? Right. That's the OG33. <laughs> Yo, you already know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> Before the hundred mil. <laughs> Before the hundred mil. So what? What happened? I mean, how did you end up doing that? Shit, he was tired. You know, we just got that. You know, it's like y'all. You know, it's like family in a sense. You like, like it's, I, it's I need business to take us and home. shit. But it's fa- you know, but it's just a deeper, deeper. Yeah, you know, relationship. So yeah. he was like, dude, I'm tired. Da, da, da. I said, dude, I'll drive you out. You know, to Baton Rouge, and he was like, bullshit. And I was like, no, no man, I'll go pack my bag right now. And he's like, really? And I was like, yeah. It was Sunday at like five in the morning. You know, we all been up. It's, you know, Sunday. Yeah. So he been out here Friday, Saturday, nonstop. And you drove you know, back home? Or yeah, you, you know, and then I, I get in the car, I get my backpack. Of course, they're, you know, they throw the white dude right in front of the driver's seat, right <laughs> off right. the rim. Like, I already know what's up. I ain't saying shit. Just, I was about to say, because <laughs> the first thing anybody going to think about is like, oh, you ain't going to get stopped. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And then, nah, then I called call Space Boy. When we made it over the Texas line. I said, we still good. <laughs> 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 really don't know what's going on around here, but I know we're good right now. So, <laughs> man, I, I love it because, you know, to build that relationship, did you have ever think that he would be as big for as uh he is today nba yeah, young boy the yeah way and he i've is. said it to uh, people in like higher up executives in the industry and ah, uh, he's he's played his time bullshit that kid has been hit his prime mm. wow. trust me and that that kid has put out more mixtape and albums than anyone i think last year they put out like nine projects yeah, yeah. dude everything they no, go, no one's doing that right and so you know he's just got a whole nother work ethic about him and then you got to stop and think he has not hit his full potential yet you know because he had some legal issues and you know boom that's going to be a setback right but and he then, beat that case yeah and then he got out and then boom you know back in then COVID hit etc cetera, etc cetera. but then if you really look at it that kid has never had a full international tour mm-hmm. uh uh with with Live Nation or AEG, and he's never done a full American tour, North American tour through AEG or Live Nation. Wow! And right now he's you know, still so many people favorites. Oh yeah, because every they time when we ask, and he's not him. on the radio, mm. and he's one of the number one stream. Exactly. You know, so I'll argue with anyone about that shit because I've seen it in real life. You know, we we live stream pay per viewed him six years ago. People only know about that. We're the yeah. only ones in the world that actually broadcasted him live on. A platform. Wow, where was this at? That was in New Orleans when he first got out of jail the first time. Yeah, and y'all went down. Yeah, it was. It was matter of fact that weekend is when they crowned or they uh, chained. Um, man, what's the dude that gotten all the shit uh, with him? They chained. They chained him up at that show and everything, uh, dude. Uh, God damn, it's gonna make me. He got into it with, with uh, NBA young boy. No, no, no. He didn't get into it with them. It was like the. Yeah, I'm not getting into all that, but uh, man, what's his name? Sorry, everybody. No, Fred, <laughs> Sorry, three three. He from he from he from New Orleans. No, nah, he was from Atlanta. He from Atlanta, and, and then he signed he signed the to the label. Okay, okay. Now I don't know who it God was. Damn, that's gonna kill that's me. Gonna get, yeah, yeah, that's gonna kill you. Yeah, we might have slipped on we, that. I'm old, so uh, it'll come to me uh, after a while. It right. come after you. Oh but, yeah, I remember, I remember that. But that's when he signed the Young Boys label, and they chained him up that night, and then they got a, a double. Like I don't know, it's something like they because they sold out two shows back to back in House of Blues, so they got like some type of gold record plaque deal for signing out, selling out two back to back shows at the wow. House of Blues out there. So right then I knew this kid. He's just he's he's different. He's an anomaly. If you like him or not, I don't give a shit. At the end of the day, that dude's you know his, his streaming numbers are off the chain. And he, in my opinion, I still to this day don't think he's hit his full potential. I think it's it's been good for him to be in the position that he's at right now because it's made him grow in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. right, and mature in a lot of ways. You know, he's he's you know when he was popping back in goddamn six years ago, I think it was like he was like eighteen or nineteen, dude. Listen, you I've know? seen this guy take his stuff off of YouTube. I've seen this guy right. put makeup on. <laughs> he put makeup on on YouTube. I mean, his pictures start popping out, but then they start saying, comparing him to like a rock star, mm-hmm. like Kiss and all of them, because that is a thing, you know? Right. Like, people... You think he's going to cross over later on, switch it up and cross over? I think he already has. You think so? I know he has. That's what I'm saying. He's, I don't, he's I don't, a different I think type the more, of artist. The more he matures, the more... 
he's gonna he's gonna go into other things that you wouldn't expect of him, and he's gonna kill it no matter what think, he touches. What What do you think his? Because I would think any career has a um, lifespan. Right. What do you think his is career wise? Man, I'll go. I, 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 that's what I'm trying to say. I think it's we haven't really tapped into it. I know, it. but how you long do I mean? you think it would be, though? Like when I think an artist come and hit I think he's going he to be one of them Drake dudes and one of the, you know, you Kodak years, Blacks. Yeah, I don't years. think he's going away. You don't think he's going nowhere? I don't think he's going here. I think he's one of the exceptions within the music industry that hasn't had to bow down to the masses in radio mm -hmm. and shit. And he's got his own fan base, which is massive. Right. And nobody else like him right now. All he got to do is keep, keep his head on right and, and continue to mature. And I think as he does that, he's going to reach his full potential. Mm. Wow. Um, so here we go. You know, he, yeah, he, he will reach his full potential because he's the NBA young boy and they love him. These young cats come on here and he can drop a song and he go to 10 million in one mm -hmm. night on YouTube. He's That's different. It. He's That's a different it. type of guy. He man. is, man. I mean, who put out nine projects? Nobody. <laughs> Only one did that with Master P and them when they right. did them 27 in, 28. in one. 28. Okay, 28 yeah. in one year. Right. That was in the 90s, though. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Different time. But so let me ask you this, man. You had, uh, what was that show that y'all had down there? Because you had, I remember Mo3 rapping. I took some of that footage and used it, too, on one of my right. interviews, just showing. What was that show that you, when you first had Space Boy down there? Let's talk about it. Was the Black the Black? Black yeah, box. it was the Black Box the Show. The Black Box Show. Yeah. I want to talk about that show because there were so many different people that I seen when you showed me the footage of them rapping in there. Right. What made you put that together? And, and, and like, who all? Give me some names of some of the guys. Yeah, so we were, I was doing a, um, what were they called? An anime okay. uh, deal from Japan okay. or something like that. And they had to bring American actors in to do the voiceover for the cartoon thing mm -hmm. and so I was in there for like two days and I was like oh man this is some cool fucking shit I've always wondered mm -hmm. how this shit went down. went down yeah and so by day two I'm like okay god damn this thing's taking a lot longer you know now I'm getting <laughs> bored and shit so now I'm like starting to think like man what can we do with all this shit mm -hmm. and that's where I called B. Watts man I was like yo you got to come here and bring your shit and let me show you something. I think I'm onto something. Okay. And so he showed up. I said, uh, uh, bring an AOK -okay at the time. I forget what they call them now, but <laughs> this is back in the day. And so they come and shit, and then we I go live with it, and they were just like, what? You got Rap City the Basement. I said, that's what I'm trying to tell you. And that's where, you know, that was back that's in 2015 kicked we kicked that off. Wow. And it was I, just over everyone's head. Man, so, and I, like I said, and I, I know I seen, uh, uh, early on I seen Mo3 come through there. Like, how was it dealing with him when he would come through and, uh, you know, he, he was un, He was unique. You know what I'm saying? He was all about his business. He went on no bullshit. He was always respectful. You know, my hat's off. We still got a bandana that he left in, in the studio. Wow. You Did know you frame it? We still got it. I had, I had, I had his shadow box and shit, but we got yeah. we still got the bandana and shit. Space. I like that. You know man. what I'm saying? That's so he, lot. you know, and then we've always kept it like y'all here. You know, we're not for the drama and yeah. trying to get into the to you know. I, I'm not one to be like trying to be gangster and all that shit. Like I'm yeah. just here to pr pr provide a platform for people to better themselves and to help yeah, better just, themselves. Man. That's what we've always been on that shit. So when they when they came, it was like being at at grandpa's house or. You know, they were always relaxed because we ain't trying to bring all that other bullshit around our studio to create that bullshit. Yeah. So everyone in the city knows when they come over our shit, it's secure, it's quiet. We ain't on social media. We ain't posting who's here right now. Yeah. You know, you, you pull up to the back door, text, and boom, you slide in. No one knows who's there. Yeah. And we keep it that way. Wow. Always. So that way, the artists, everyone feels comfortable. Like, when DaBaby first came into town, yeah, I remember I hit that. I was like, this is the next dude. I'm like, who's this dude? Hit, you know, DaBaby? And, yeah, so, he, but he had that, you know, that grandparent feeling. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're yeah, at yeah, home. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That motherfucker's in our studio for like two weeks. People don't know that. Wow. You know, I mean, you know. That's crazy, but at the end of the day, I could believe it because you, you the way the place was set up and just the way, the feel you get when you come in there. Right. Um, I, you know, I, <laughs> my wife's on meals. But you know, like, when, when you think about, like, like the talent that you've, you've put, been able to film, I also, Dolph, didn't you film Dolph? 
man, we feel dog. We, you know, we first started the, so the whole, the whole, the whole, the whole thing is we, we, so we started in the black box show and we saw a potential, you know, nowadays they have the microphone that everyone's doing right now. Yeah. 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 Shit, it's a music video. Correct. What people never fully grasped with us was when Mo three went in there and spit them bars, this shit was live. Yeah, yeah. So if he fucked up, that was it. That so was it. He, you know, it was like the broom sweeper. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, the pressure's like the on. Man on, on right. we, we, we give you a, like a rehearsal to come in and run your shit. But when we went live, yeah, man, if he fucked that up, you're fucking it up in front of you know fifteen thousand people. But that was the same case with the the Boosie Gone Bad thing as well. Yeah, same. You shit. like to do everything you know. live, right? Well, he like you live, live because, streaming because the engagement. You know, you're letting you're letting the people dictate. You know how that. You know, like we played around with Erica, you know, like, do you want to do this song or this song? And so there's just different ways that you can do things that make it inter. I call it interactive TV. Yeah. Right. So if you have interactive TV to the fans, they feel like they're a part of the production. So that's key because now they're going to they're going to share, reshare and the shit's just going to go viral, you know, across the country. Wow. So you, know, you, you mentioned Erica, right? Erica and I see Space Boy with her a lot like. Were you the one that linked them together by coming through the studio? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, she would that, come. That, that, that connection for her was made. working mm-hmm. at, at artistic. And, and then we and then she allowed us to do some projects. You know, which to this day, you know, shit, I'm great grateful. Man, you know, y'all still have a good relationship, was, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, we. And she we just do. had a birthday um, recently. A birthday uh-huh. bash. Did you do the production on that? No, uh, because the AEG has took over that venue now, and there's just a whole another set of rules. And so, oh, okay. so stuff when, like that. when she would come in, though, how was it working with Erica? I have to ask you that now that I brought it up. Like, how was it? How was she working with to to work with? Uh, far as you know, that was a time where y'all did that all in the studio. I remember even the BET. Right. Uh, that shot where they was doing the cypher, right? Yeah, they did the cypher at your spot. At, at the spot, you so, know, we did the Jill Scott versus battle at my spot. Wow! But it, it was cool. Like with her working with her, she's a you know she's a uh, she's you know like genius. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, all bullshit aside, I'm not f- fanning out or <laughs> you know <laughs> what I'm not, saying. Right? But it's like you know when you sit down, she's so in depth about things. So it's you know I always say like when you walk away from her, it's like the the doves are following you. You know, to the yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's intense sometimes. Enlightenment. But yeah, but there's there's that, you know what I'm saying? So that you know, when you get a room of creatives with her, it just it just feeds and things grow and things happen and you know, and then when you're done, you know, when she spits that vision out, if you could just help help her with that vision to execute, that's really the role we played in that deal. It's it was always Erica's idea things she wanted to achieve you know we were just we were a vessel there to help bring that vision to light to, well, when to i think America. about what was those Erica, numbers on, what i got was, a question up to that's what those numbers was on facebook but you can go ahead because it's still pertaining to erica when i think about erica i think about how unique she is in everything that she does how she dresses how she speaks how right. she everything so whereas as production is concerned is she the same way as in she always try to come up with things that are like super different, like way outside of the box? And right. sometimes it might. Is it hard for you to make that be a reality? No, you know, because I'm a pretty open minded guy. Mm-hmm. You know, there was like one thing that happened in she switched things up. And so it was just like, OK, so I'm not the fat kid that got picked for the for the dodgeball team. So what you're telling me, I need to sit on the bench. Like, okay, coach, let's, let's do that. You know what I mean? Right. I'm a team player. And so there, you know, with some of the stuff that she has can be challenging, but it's always going to be worth it if you can figure things out as a team and, and to be able to execute those visions that are in that woman's head, mm-hmm. period. You wow. know, so she she was the one that, that really, you know, we worked our ass off. because So I was going into the story to say that we had the, the black box show. And then how do we grow from here? So we, we would pull up to a concert that was happening because you had local promoters, right? So we, we would pull up and say, hey, can we shoot your show? They would be like, yeah, they think we're going to pull up with some DSLR cameras. And we're pulling up with like half a million yeah, in, yeah. In, in, in production gear. And they're like, man, what the fuck is this? Oh, what shit, man? If y'all don't want us, we'll just leave. And then they leave. I would always have the cameras out so they can see them cameras like 20 Gs a piece. I know. Right? 
So they're like, nah, man, fuck it, come in. So we were really sort of boss hogging <laughs> our way into the situation. So once we got in backstage, then I go up to the to the engineer and like, hey, we need a right and left channel from, from front of house over to our video village. And then we got sound going on and yeah, we ain't got no licensing, no nothing, right? And yeah, and we were getting like revolt television quality production and we had to have shot 15 of these, right? For, so the first one we ever shot, who? Boosie. Man. Mm. That was the first one we got our opportunity on. We shot Boosie here uh, in Dallas, and it was it was a crazy concert. Got phenomenal footage off the deal. Um, and that's really where it started. And then people are like, well, why don't you have this on YouTube? You know, he's a dumbass. He's doing all this production for there is everyone kept saying for free. He ain't trying to make no money off this. He's trying to get your foot in the door. You know, you damn right. So <laughs> it just, so it's just a different level of business and thinking. And I always stay true to that. And that, you know, when the time is right, I'll launch that deal. I can always go get a sync license and launch this shit. Mm -hmm. And he touched on it. Like we got a whole young Dolph the first time in Dallas, ever in Dallas, his first tour. Right. You know, we got the whole damn concert. It's mm. footage that's never been seen, and it's high quality. You shit. got a lot of footage that's never been seen but over there. I right. think, it, it, but it becomes a value. I remember me and Gutter TV was talking, and the other day we, he was talking about how after uh, you know Migos came to his door, right? You know, when it was just take off in Quavo, right? And he got the first footage of when they were starting. What well, now? They come back and they purchase that footage. You never right. know. There's, a, there's movies and stuff you know that I mean? they do. So you can't play when it comes down to certain things if right. you don't want to devalue it. Like so we, so we, don't we, be we've too got, hasty we, to, to let it go. There you go. We've got footage on Mo3 has never hit the internet. Like exclusive shit. Like, and you're seriously. holding on to it for what? If he well, wanted to do a documentary. Yeah, if, if they want to do a movie. documentary and sit down and stuff. Like, I, I didn't, I'm not a clout chaser, so I'm not, you know, typical person. Like, when he passed away, everyone trying to put shit out when they did that documentary you know, when they did that 50 cent um thing on mo three did anybody approach you about that no i wish they would have did you watch it yeah what did you think it was cool i mean i think it's cool that that he was able to get some light on the situation i just think that it it, it if they had gotten footage from you it would have been even yeah better. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind. So yeah, I don't, you know, so I, I'm proud of them, you know, the family and everything. He's, you know, to be able to to keep his legacy alive for the community, yeah, right? Yeah. But no, there's definitely if we if we had some of my production footage that would have been offered up into that situation, dude. I've got interviews that are intense with this kid. Like it's just never hit the internet. Wow, that's that's serious. You know. Um, and Rain, you know this. Rain, yeah, definitely, definitely. That's my boy right there, old Rain Water. Don't, don't, don't be stuttering right now. Either. You know how he get. Yeah, yeah. I want to. I, I just, you know, I, I like. I, said, I wanted to talk with you tonight. Um, now I, I see the next up thing. Is it next up? The Dallas. The, the, what's up the name next. of the Dallas up next? Right. Um, like, like you guys. Now we come up to a point where you are now fit to produce something else. Right. And you're doing the like, production for it. Right. right. Like, mm -hmm. like, like, how did you even end up dealing with the production on that situation? Well, I want, I want to go back first. Okay. Okay. You know, ahead. cause we left off with, with, with Erica's deals. So we, yeah. we, we See, had, yeah, we had, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, you know, you're right, we, we, man. We, we, I, I wanted to ask a question. You cut me off, right. dog. You got to remember what it is. I can't even remember it now. <laughs> I, it, it, but, but, I know what I, what it was. It was, I wanted to know what, how, what kind of numbers, numbers. that y'all did. Right. That, you know, far as, and it was on Facebook. Right. But I remember some astronomical numbers that right. we had spoke about. Right. And just how much of an impact did you, when you seen that, it was like, damn, you know, so that was our first time, right? The, Really not the first it. time but the second time that we did she had like dave Chappelle and all this and she was like hey let's i'm gonna let you let you do this again this year and we're going to take it a step further so wow. the first time was like she allowed us to do like three songs or something live she's seen that and this the next year she's like okay let's step it up and that that were you know we didn't do any marketing anything it was like over a million people from all over the world hit just, that boom hit it. and then we compared that right at that time Kendrick Lamar did a deal with with uh, American Express they beat us by a million views but the engagement that we had on that with Erica was stupid it was way more it mm -hmm. blew them away and we didn't have no marketing budgets American wow. Express behind it and that's where I knew I was on to something and I knew this was the future moving forward in a lot of ways, right? It's, you know, the pay-per-views are not meant for everything. Um, I mean, I'll just put people on some game. Like, 
And I've been trying to make it happen, young boy. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Three, three, you need to get this deal done. But just imagine, you know, NBA young boy, tell all, all your listeners right now, if we had NBA young boy, a house arrest concert for 1999, would you not buy in right now? Oh yeah. They we buy. break the fucking internet, right? Easy. So, so it's those type of situations that I see that what the artists and stuff are not understanding is that we're cutting all the TV networks out. We don't need them. Fuck, if you're sitting over here with 40 million fans, you know, if we can only tap 5% of the 40 million, listen to what I'm telling you. And That's big. And it's not unrealistic. And then yeah. people are like, oh, I wouldn't pay for that or I wouldn't do this. Well, you're not my client. Because some and you're people not my feel like. You're not my target audience. I'm looking for the super fan. Because the some super people fan feel, will pay. Some people feel like, okay, you get more of a vibe when you're there at the concert because you can feel the vibe a lot better right. compared to just watching it on TV. But you're offering them a cheaper price watching it on TV than Come if on. they went on to the concert. Right. It'd be way more to pay right. to go to the concert rather than watching it on TV. But, but you're going to give them a better experience through that pay-per-view. Like right. if you went ba look back at Boosie Gone Bad, you would never see that at a Boosie concert anywhere, anywhere. That's mm -hmm. right. And let me, let me, let me, we can all as a, as a community watch Sunday football for free. Mm -hmm. Right. Or you can pay $200 to go down the Cowboy game plus parking, drinks, food, whatever. I'll stay at home. Right. Boom. But, but wouldn't you say you get a better experience at home on the flat screen than you do at the stadium? Now, now, hold on. <laughs> no, that's true. You, you, you're going to have two different experiences. As I am about to say, right? it just depends on but, what you want to no. experience. Because right. I heard somebody talk about that earlier today. They said that if you want to go to the game, not for the game, then go right. to the game. Because right. that's really what you're going to go. Right. You're going to go for the partying, the networking, the everything. If right. That's what you do at the game. Right. You don't really see the game. That's it. And then you don't hear the commentators and right, the instant everything. replays. And you know what I mean? So you're, you're getting two different experiences when you go to the concert mm -hmm. and when you're at home. Exactly. You know, me, I'm that dude that's at home watching TV and get that experience. Wow. And I, and I agree with you. So, and, and like I say, Erica Badu was one of, is one of the largest artists, one of them that we have here for me. I, I go to the elevator in Vegas or Cali or wherever, and I'm going to hear, oh, oh, you know, you know, you know. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm going to hear that. No, so that's, so, 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 queen. so, so queen. all those, I, so I was going back to all those concerts we shot, and people are like, oh, they're not getting paid nothing. They're dumb motherfuckers, this, that, and another. But at the end of the day, that built our resume. So when we did sit down and were introduced to her, this is what we've done. And that's right. what led that relationship grow. And she took a risk and given us a chance to do that. I mean, I always will be, Erica gave us that first. Very grateful. I, I got to ask you this. Uh, every time I go, we'll go to your uh, 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 office, I will see a picture of DOC. Shout out DOC. We just had him on here right. about a couple of weeks ago. You've been you know, watching yeah, that one? No, I didn't. You know, then you DOC. You got see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. DOC yeah. interview went hard right, right. here. I just want to uh, just uh, dive into how, how did he end up sitting there and how did you even get that picture? With DOC? Yeah. That was just word of mouth and stuff that happened. You know, because I actually met DOC prior to meeting Erica. Really? Mm. Yeah. Where did uh, you meet some, DOC at? Through, through some other friends. And, okay. You know, okay. producers, because that's what he does. You know what I'm saying? So, that you know, we had, he had come over and got introduced and we sort of hit it off and, you know, it, it went from there. But, you know, our relationship with him was always separate from, from, from you know, our relationship with Erica type deal. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and then how we were introduced to Erica, right? It was through a totally different group of people and, you know, but we've got relationships with them both. And, but I can you know, see that happening rocking. because they're huge they're huge artists. Yeah, they're huge uh, legendary. Legendary, right. you know. So that that right. makes it's sense. It's the so. formula. <laughs> hey, I I say, that's my song. <laughs> and I want to say congratulations to Erica for getting the key to Dallas. Right. Because that was really big. Right. No, not to Dallas. Sorry, to Deep Ellum. Right. That's what they awarded her on her birthday. And congratulations. Right. Congrats, You're well, congrats, well deserved. congrats from Boss Talk One Hundred and One. Yeah, she could take that deal anywhere. You know, so it's Definitely. cool that she keeps that here in the community and stuff like that. So she represents you know, Dallas like to, to the, the fullest. fullest. Right. Yeah, and then she just did the whole fashion that, mm -hmm. you know, a fashion shoot deal was massive. Massive. Know, but she just, you know, she's always, you know, she's. I love it. She's, she's there. She's there. Yeah. It's Erica. Let me, me, now we got to get into the up next. The up right? next. But the question that I first want to ask about the up next is 
whose idea was it? Who came up with the idea of Up Next? So the story behind Up Next is uh, Half Pint Films, which is, you know. That's my boy right there. Shout out, Half Pint. (laughs) Yeah, I'll be on him, too. That's (laughs) my guy. He's going to answer that phone when I call. That's for sure. (laughs) So, uh, you know, we've met. So he came up with that Up Next. Yeah, so the story with him, we met him back at the end of 2015, right when Goye was starting to, I mean, he was just getting that. Okay. uh, you know, and he'd come through the studio, and I, I was pitching him this stuff seven years ago with Yale. Mm-hmm. And it's just so fast track seven years later, you know, my phone rings and it's, you know, it's half pint. So I'm like, damn, what's he? I hadn't talked to him in a while. So I answered the phone, and he was like, yo, this half pint, what's up? And he was like, hey, remember that shit you were talking about seven years ago? Let's do this shit. Oh, so you gave him the idea seven years ago? Well, just in what I was doing on the broadcast production. You know, and then, you know, they've been watching, you know, the different things that we've done and everything. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I want to jump into this deal and I, w- I want to sit down with you and make this happen. Mm-hmm. And then I was just, you know, I was like, of course, you know, man, I've been waiting seven years. I've been pitching y'all. You know what I mean? So I'm in. Let's sit down and I let me get a full understanding of what it is that you're trying to do to make sure that this would be a good fit for both of us. Right. And so we sat down at Boomer Jacks like three or four times, had drinks and kicked back and talked about shit and boom he was i was like well do you got you got a name of the game show and everything and he's like yeah up next you got the logo yeah right here i'm like okay i'm in he already had all of it yeah. already mm-hmm. waiting and then you know space and i had our stuff and we've just and then coming off the boosie gone bad production wise and everything i was like dude i can add so much input in how to really produce this thing at a high level and then you know my thing right now is is it's just to bring more people of Dallas together, right? So he he'd hit me up, boom. Then we reach out to Duffy, we lock Duffy in. We reach out to Bebe, lock him in. Reach out to Hit That, locked him in. Reach out to Space, locked him in. Now why we got choosing. Why did y'all choose those people in particular? Uh, we just figured it was it was a good fit for the situation. So there is good, you know, people are going to debate this shit, and we already got trollers out there right now hating on this. Yeah, situation. I didn't heard. I, I heard know. it was some another show that was already uh, kind of saying they was doing that, but not on the level you right. guys are about to take right. it. Yeah, and so I that's, heard a lot of people say, right. "Oh, I came up with that idea first. Right, and I'm like, "But so it's that, not that's, really." So that's why I'm sitting in this chair right now. Right. Okay, let's get down to this shit. Go right? ahead. Anyone that knows me, I'm not fucking around. I ain't taking no one's shit. Don't care what you had going on. You got dreamers and you got doers in the society. The wow. team that we put together are going to execute, and y'all just sit back and watch how big this fucking <laughs> thing's getting ready to go. And y'all can hate on us all you want, and I'm not about that energy. Right. But I'm just saying, if y'all got to get on and you're miserable, you know, everyone's got dreams, everyone's got da 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 da, and, and the 90% of the people in the in the Dallas right now, what they're thinking this is like an artist showcase. No. We getting ready to pull off American Idol with a little bit of rhythm and flow, you know, a little bit of each so together. So that's what it's going to be like. Yeah, it's a 30-person crew to pull this shit off. You're talking a $2.6 million TV production filming the whole season one of Up Next. So this wow. is nothing like anybody's ever done in Dallas. So you're bringing you know? in people to audition, and they're, are they going to be there and... Do they have to be from Dallas? Oh, okay. So yeah. So yeah, if you want like if you, if you to want to register to this deal, you go to upnextlive.com mm-hmm. is the process. You can see the commercial, scroll down, then you can, you know, you go you, you want to sign up, boom, you fill out the paperwork right there online, swipe your credit card, boom, you're in as as for the auditions. So swipe your credit you know, card, how much does it cost? So it's two ninety nine to get in. So we came up so you with gotta the, put some skin the, in the game. You gotta put some skin in the game. And then once you put that skin in the game, Within a week later, you're going to get uh, emailed a artist. Uh, it's a beat pat portal. Mm-hmm. So we've gone to the top music producers in Dallas, mm-hmm. and we've had a team of people selecting, you know, producers scrolling through all these beat submissions, right? And and then the artist is going to have to pick a beat, write eight bars, and come in front of that panel and impress them to make it to the next round. So when they come in front of that panel, wow. so it's it's not like an audition where everybody is going to come and sit down and, okay, you're next, you're next, you're next. No, nah, just like American Idol. Like American yeah, Idol. Right. So it's not like everybody's going to be there and... Yeah, so that's where we'll have... Uh, Bebe's going to host the show. Okay. We'll have, you know, a top DJ in Dallas, right, that's a part of the show. So who's and the then, Simon Cowway? So then you're going to have... We uh, don't know uh, yet. We'll have a co-host in this with Space, 
Space gonna be that dude like play up while you crying. That's yeah. what I'm you know trying what to figure out who's gonna so be that, that, that person. That's space, and then no, you that's got Simon. They, that's yeah. not Simon Cap. No, no, because no. he was a judge. Correct. So, oh, so they, okay. I, I would say hit that. Hit that's yeah, gonna be that. Yeah, because you gotta be that person you know, so who's gonna be like that bad right, guy. Right, that's hit that. I think, I, but, like but, I said, but 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 Half Pint's got his little way in there too. Then you got Duffy that ain't playing around. You know, you got you got the female power in there right now. So give us a rundown. You got you got you got Half Pint. Hit that. He's a judge. Right. Duffy is a judge. Right. Hit that is a judge. Right. And uh, Space Boy is just a, 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 like a co host. Uh -huh. And, and Bay Bay is a host. Bay is the host. Yes. Okay. Okay. And that's it. So you only yeah. have three three hosts? That no, you got no, no, no. Two, two hosts, two hosts. Th one, one host, one co host, and Not three hosts, judges. I mean judges. Three, right. judges. three judges. So Correct. that's, that's, that's through way. that's through the audition. You make okay. it through the audition. Now we go to the competition. Wow! And each competition is going to have a unique boom that you got to do right. And then we'll have celebrity judges introduced weekly oh, okay. for the competition. Oh, so, okay. you know, we're, we're looking at that's some dope. big, big names coming in to Dallas. And that's where I'll tell anyone in Dallas that's hating on our situation, whatever. You ain't pulling these names. Uh, you know what I mean? You like, don't have these contacts. Yeah, hell no. How like, many and people? I'm not even going to let people know what that is. But let rest assure you, we were bringing in people. One guy just got a hundred million dollar deal. Wow, mm. like we're not fucking around on so that. So you already have you know? those names already put to the side yeah, of who's going to be doing it. Yeah, we got people reaching out. We're in conversations okay. with them right now. It's this, so this, it, it is a legit situation. We haven't picked out the winner. No, you know, yeah, who, yeah. Who, whoever we do pick in this situation is going to be a superstar because they're going to have to go through, I think it's two audition rounds and five competition rounds to be crowned up next. So and, then they, and then they just announced today... Ten thousand cash prize. So if you pay two ninety nine, you got a chance to win ten thousand cash, plus all the exposure you're going to get out of this, plus the music videos are going to be shot, the photo shoots, the the studio time, uh, and then we've got we're in talks right now with major labels like big labels just for a single deal because someone might not want an album deal, right? So a single deal is a hell of a deal for, for the situation. And we're tying down the de details with major labels as we speak right now. How many people are y'all um, going to have to get to that round where they're going to sit in front of the, the judges? Um, so we'll go through auditions. Yeah, the auditions. Like how many so, people are so, you bringing so, to that so, round? So, so the auditions. Right. When they win that, when it goes into the competition, it will be knocked That's down to I'm 12 saying. people. To 12 people. And That's then it'll be knocked down to see. six, and then it'll be knocked okay. down to four, and then it'll be boom. You know, you get into the finals. Is there a max know? of how many people you're going to cut off to be able to um, enter, or you is unlimited amount of people can enter? So right now, our goal right now, which I want to tell people too, because they're like, oh, why are they charging artists and this, that, and another? What they don't understand is that, like I was saying, this whole season, if you look at it, it's a 2.6 million. We don't have no investors. There's no one that's put the money up for this deal. We're not signed to any major network situation. We're actually coming to as a community to bring all the assets of the community to be mm -hmm. able to pull this shit off. All right. So we ain't making no fucking money off this deal. It, and we ain't even going to come close to it. But we do. You, you are going to have hard cost in business like security, you know, uh, uh, you know, this, that and another. There's going to be little cost that. You know, we got to generate something to help, you know, cover those costs for that. But the opportunity that you're getting at a 299, even if you just sign up for 299, you select the beat, you perform and you get ejected right off the show. When check it out, that auditions episode one. That's mm -hmm. big. When okay, you go to so, competition, hold, 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 hold. so then South by Southwest, y'all know and I know it's right. like, what six hundred to a thousand to pick up a mic mm -hmm. in, in front of seventy people. And you ain't getting judged. You ain't getting no feedback, no nothing. Look, for two ninety nine, man, you're sitting in front of the panel of people that we have. If you like them or not, it doesn't matter. That's networking they're, 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 too. They're, they're some of the biggest influencers of Dallas. Mm -hmm. And then that episode's going to make it on to the season filming. Mm -hmm. So so even if you get ejected right out the people gate, will see your face. you got to perform on a network type show and get critiqued by Duffy hit that mm -hmm. baby in them right and then you're and then you're going to be on the first episode run of the whole situation and if you don't so, make it you can come back next season boom man so how are we taking advantage of anyone to come talk to me like seriously but, no, i think it's a great opportunity i think you guys just have to 
start once you move the needle and start to do it, I think people will start to realize what they're in. Right. Sometimes, a lot of times, people can't see it until it starts to to the right to the needle starts to move. Or to so the, I am telling people right now, when this deal's done, there's going to be a ton of people sitting there like, "Damn, I should have signed up for that." Of course, shit. that's what that's what you know, always and that's happens. That's what we're you know. Whatever. But when you think, but when you start to compare it to American Idol, the first thing I'm thinking about now is okay. So when they get to that um, competition round, are you going to offer um, wardrobe and all of that stuff? As yeah. Well so to like, them? like just say like if there's a female, you know, then like you know Duffy's got her hairline, and you know what I mean. So yes, there's going to be look, look at the who, whoever wins this is going to be like a, a music makeover. Mm-hmm. I'm talking full marketing, distribution, sync opportunities. Touring opportunities, cash prizes. And they don't have to be a Dallas local. They can be from anywhere. Yeah, we are allowing some people to come in. If they got what it is, like, bring it, you know. But so they can the, fly in. Yeah, but but, but, but what we are doing is keeping it here in Dallas, Dallas while it goes for on. the people of Dallas, right? right? Wow. I like it, man. And then uh, if you look, we got 10 cameras, right? So there's 10 camera operators of Dallas. So then, you know, like, I want to bring Prophecy and help direct the show. My boy and, right there. You know what I mean? So, like, and then you got the producers coming in. you got the DJs coming in. So no one can say that this ain't for the city and this ain't oh, a it's legit the situation. City. We bring in the most powerful people that you can. You know what I'm saying? That have done, you know, I don't like the word powerful, but I would retract that. But I'm just saying, like, the, the people that are really putting on and trying to do shit for the city, if you like them or not. I, I like know. to say, you know, um, when I seen it, boom, you know, I was like, dang, it made me excited to see the way. Yeah, when that commercial came out, man, that I shit knew was that, fire, I, knew, dude. I, I was like, that's my boy right there. I already knew. I said, man, I, 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 he back, you know? <laughs> you know, so, I, I, and I also want to, you know, plug in too with Cash with uh, Digital University. You know, he's another one, you know, Kus, 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 and all the, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. but Cash has come in on this deal too, is, is an integral part to this deal with Half Pint. And, you know, we all came together and then it just is grew from there to where we got like a 30 person production team to pull this on. So it's not it's not just half high. I mean, we got a, a massive team of people that have dedicated, you know, uh, hours and in three, four in the morning, man, we're on Zoom to so, make this shit. So y'all knew when y'all put that out, you was going to make people say, man, we right. want to see what's going to happen next with right. that. And then Half Pint needs this shit too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, he's he's a creative dude, man. You know, would he's you look very, at this? And he got the little eyeballs. Mm-hmm. You know, he a marketing genius. Dude. I ain't going to lie to you y'all. Know? And I'm going to say this. I don't care if you get mad about it. Lil Runny should have been one of them judges, man. So, I'm so, not going to play with y'all by hey, Lil hey, Runny. Hey, That's hey. my guy right there. Uh, I don't play by Lil so, Runny. Lil Runny should have been a judge or something. He so, better be on that show or else I ain't watching it. So we, so he was, <laughs> he was, and we, we, we had talks with him. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Cause man, shit, I'll just guy. say, literally, I talked to little Ronnie first. Oh, that's the, he, he okay. I, I ain't gonna, let's get the story straight. If we're going to have a story right now, I talked to him and then, and then something like half pint called him on some shit was talking. He was like, man, I just talked to Doug. You need to call Doug. So really, Little Ronnie, you know what I'm saying, connected the dots. I will say that. He okay. connected the if it wasn't for him, I don't know if we'd be having this conversation. Mm. Wow. Because he he connected that. That's my He's guy. He's that type of person. No, though. no, he, he is. is that type well, of he person. comes and right. co hosts my show sometimes. So he, he connected the dots to the situation and then that now it's and then mm. we had him, we were thinking about having him on a judge, but Ronnie man, he a lot of people don't know about judge. his writing. His oh, yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> If they and watch shit. Boss Talk 101, so they, they know. know about it. Right. Okay? So, so, so that's where we said it would be best to have him in the final. As a judge. Yeah, no, no, later no. on. As the finals. Right, I can't later. get too much I into it. Yeah, later but on. as the finals four, I will say, right. they will be paired with the top producers in Dallas. Mm. And that's where... He and, and I'll just shut up with all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Too much. Well, I guess, I, all no. right, I'm gonna let you know. Yeah, he <laughs> he's gonna get plugged in and get. Yeah, because you when know you what I'm watch, because I keep because you keep bringing up American Idol, so I'm keep I keep on comparing it. You know, looking you at keep that. bringing up American Idol. No, he yeah. don't. No, he did no. earlier. Well, that well, was it, one it, time. Is no, like, did y'all have y'all y'all watch Rhythm and Flow? No, I have. Come on, I have. No, I haven't. I don't know. I think. Yeah, you just say that because yeah. Jamaica was like, I, I have it. I then, I have. No, I have it. And then you're like, I, I can't Rhythm say I have it. I can't say I have it. <laughs> no. no, no. I'm going to tell uh, you I have it. Hub, man. Okay, so when y'all go home this weekend, you got to watch <laughs> Rhythm and Flow on Netflix. Okay. Just watch one or two episodes. Okay. And you'll see, you know. It, no, it was, because what I was know, thinking about when you were talking about that, I think about um, how when 
artist development when they reach to a certain stage and uh-huh. you you're on no what's the, that's the voice where they're on a certain I'm not team go there which when they're on a certain team yeah. and you develop the artist because right. as they get to a certain spot you're trying to develop them to get better and compete against each yeah, other that's what we're doing right that's so what people need to understand that's what, that's what, that's just what give i'm us thinking your money about and get the fuck no. out. Like, i'm thinking no. about you know like you bring in somebody like the ronnie or whoever to teach them to help advance them in, huh? you know, writing skills or in whatever skills right. that they have right. to move on to, you know, the next round and keep going to compete right. against each right. other. That's no, what I'll right. be thinking. Am I right? Right. That's what it is. I okay. mean, so like, so whatever you were saying, you have a, a, a deal coming up on Sunday and that yeah. artist yeah. has yeah. got yeah. some stuff popping, sure. right? When he signs up for Up Next, mm-hmm. you take all that music and throw it out the door. That shit ain't never hitting the TV show. Wow. Mm-hmm. So wow. we don't give a shit who, who you are. Right. So yeah. it's like we care about when you come in, you, you go and show us what you got. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's what we're talking to people right now. Like, say, say your gentleman that's coming in, he should sign up for this shit. All bullshit aside. Mm-hmm. But it's going to scare some people off because, you know, you got to have it. But what if, you're, if you're selecting a if you're selecting yeah. a beat, but, you know, and, and writing them bars and then you got to come in and perform that new song to to advance. I mean, we're really going to find. A superstar. But what are the rules as in like, if you've had a record deal before, but you don't have it right now, you're independent or whatever. Can you still be yeah. a part of this? Hell yeah, you can. You know what I mean? Because That's some, what I'm saying. I'm saying like, these, I'll just say it. You know, Tay Money, if you're watching this deal, you should jump in on this deal. Oh, so she can be a part of this. Hell yeah, she can. But then Why some people might look at you're getting, it. No, some people might look at it as being unfair. Like that person has a leg up on no, somebody man, else. It, no, no. Because when you, when you sit there with, look, when the whole community is watching and then we're gonna have the backstories. So when she picks that right. beat, and then she in the studio with little Ronnie, and then she's being frustrated, and like you're gonna capture all that shit. You're gonna capture that whole backstory. So anybody can enter right. this. That's what you're saying, right? And then when they get up and perform that song, I mean, you're gonna see if they hit that hoe or not. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> hit that hoe. You know what I mean? You know. <laughs> Right, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, if the shit sound dope, the shit sounds this, dope. If it sounds is coming trash, out, where is this going to come out to? Where are y'all gonna? So when all of this is broadcast. done, yeah, where so is this we're, gonna, gonna we're gonna broadcast this. And like, when? Look, look at it as like a Zeus TV, right? And that's you know we want the you know we we want to be able to grow this, right? And I don't want to get all technical, but we want. You know, hey, you can watch it for free, but you can give us the email, phone number, who you are, mm-hmm. male, female, right? So we can have that data collection. That way, we can get spot big sponsors next year to to elevate this thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so we're gonna have our own like network, like Zeus, really. And then and then once we get through that, then so we'll what's start the name w- of this w- network we'll, where we can go and watch? So this. it's Wallet, Wallet. You know, on that's, his that's, production, that's what, yeah, yeah, okay, so that's Productions. where we can go find it. It yeah, will be so, on his website yeah, or so, on where? So we, like right now, if you go to upnextlive.com, okay, okay, it will have all the information. You can subscribe so to the newsletter, okay. right? If you want to stay up to date and what's going on, when this stuff's going to be released. Um, right now, if you go to the website and click on uh, to watch the show, you know, we, you know, we have a landing page that pops up and it says like June, July is when we're tenant or July, August tentatively is when, when we're going to release the season. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Wow. I think that's dope, man. So, man, hey, man, I'm going to tell you something. I think we got everything out of it. Right. I wanted to make and sure. And y'all going to have to come listen, out. Like when we get into the auditions, make, yeah, y'all going to yeah, have to well, come out know, with, the, with the Boss Talk shirts say, and shit man, and listen, interview man. a couple people and what they think. You know what, man? It's going to be live you know? because at the end of the day, whatever Doug doing, I'm doing. You ain't got to worry about that <laughs> right. part, you know. Anything you need, you let me know. I'm Boss Talk 101. And that's Miss Jamaica. Right. And I, <laughs> hey, what I do want to say is I want to make sure that I've got my point across. That this, this is a television show. We're not trying to do artist showcase or open mics. And you know what I mean? And, we're, and, and on the production side, you know, if someone's saying, you know, they're, they're trying to steal our idea, man, it's like, no. Like, again, you got the dreamers and you got you got doers. Like, we put this thing together and we're executing at a very high high level. Man, and people can't wait. I can't wait, Doug. I can't wait. But how I look on it is, yes, it's who did it first. But even though you did it first, it's who does it best. So right. if anybody is saying that you stole the idea or whatever, well, 
come with it. Right. Make up it. Come on. But it, but it's this thing, you know, like there was something I saw on the internet and it was this, oh, y'all trying to steal our name in that. And it was like a totally different name, but it had the word next in it. And so then I'm like, do you own the, the, uh, Damn, what do you call it? E, the encyclopedia? <laughs> do you, the I mean, dictionary? I mean, have you patented I mean, you patent the word? the fucking word next? I no. mean, you, you know what I mean? The, the you reality is. You can always get that. You're going to you know, get it. Say, I, man, I, I, I can but, tell you now you know, that how many yeah. people that came at us about Boss Talk 101, not Boss Talk 101, you boss talk. Just, somebody, we was Boss Talk, we were going to do this, we were going right. to do that. We've heard that. It's because of the way that we done it and the traction that it got right. so fast. Right. And people have done that. But let me tell you something. You can go in there and hit in podcasting and you'll see all these different names. Boss Talk. This boss. Right. But who do it like Boss Talk 101, man, with right. Mr. Maker, ECEO, Money Moses, man, and all those by Coop, Watts, all of them on the back scene right. checking. Doug. Right, hey, right, you right. can't do it like this. Right. And then you got to be me, Mr. <laughs> Chicken Man himself. Oh, the check it man is here, <laughs> man. You can't do this, man. So that's how you gotta look at right. it, man. And I love it. It's motivation. You know, I wanna see everybody win. So if I motivate somebody to do better, I don't care what their name is, come on with it. And then Next, I wanna I wanna give a quick shout out too to like Sharonda that's part of our team. Okay. You know, KK in the mix. Okay. Uh Sydney. Let's go. You know what I mean? Those those are the real Behind the scenes, you know, behind man. the scenes that ain't getting that it. shine that you know is usually where I am, and that's why people, a lot of people don't see me moving around or in interviews and stuff. I'm usually in that that behind the scenes, behind the curtains of everything. But you know, we've 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 put around, you know, and hopefully I haven't left names out. No, but, but we got a hell of a team, and they all putting in. You know, serious hours and hard work to make this happen in the city of Dallas. Man, Great. shout out to Baby Duffy you know. and hit that, hit that and that space boy. boy and Space Hero. Boy and A hey, and <laughs> Hat Pay. Man, like I said, I'm so I'm happy to see them. Uh, you know, getting to show their element. You know, uh, getting to uh, get their uh, roses, so right. to speak. Uh, Baby, he gonna definitely shine. Oh, and That's Cash, what, Cash, and Cash, Cash, you know, he's Cash, behind. He's Cash, up Cash, Cash Digital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so man, just just, just just love it, man. You know, just the fact of everybody man I, I feel like it's a good movie if y'all can pull this off Doug right this can change the water over here Not in Dallas if. I say if because to me Doug and you could disagree if you want to but the music and the stuff that usually was happening in Dallas I hadn't been seeing the music like I used to for me right. I can't talk for everybody else I got my own damn opinion I don't care what nobody else say I, I see Big X the plug he's one of the guys that I look at um, there's a couple of guys that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking at but nothing just and I just say his name because the other ones like the Little Runnings and all of them they've made hits and right. they've done things and yelling and all of them but newly coming up I'm excited about this I want to see what you guys are about to pull off I want to see the talent that pops out, man. Right. Thank you for coming on Boss right. Talk 101. No, I appreciate y'all having us out. Boss's talk. Even though I was late. It don't matter you know? about you being late. You <laughs> family. Late I'll never. stay in this hole till tomorrow. Right. <laughs> Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk. And y'all don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow us on Patreon. All of the <laughs> everything. Okay. See you soon.